Uh, you feel that now? I feel like Rocky in this one, baby. Let's go. Alright, check it. Uh. Blast from the past, back from the future. So if I put the trigger in the past, it's no you and your future. I'm still hustling, still hugging the block. The referee to the shit. Welcome to the show. It's the Rick H Show, hosted by the greatest podcaster of all time. Now, I- I'm being very ballsy because I'm saying that around another podcaster. But I am the greatest podcaster of all time. And today, my guest is none other than my fellow tri-state area podcaster from New Jersey, yep. Jason Enriquez, podcaster, actor, and director. Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank yes you for in- coming through. Yes, indeed. Thank you for having me on here, man. I'm... I'm really, really, really humbled and honored to, to be here, honestly. Oh, you don't have to be that humble. This yeah. is a normal <laughs> pod. We, you know, we're all. Hey, don't don't say, don't say yourself lightly, bro. I see you, <laughs> I see what you be doing out here in the podcast. Yeah, world, bro. but I'm a, I'm one of those people. I, you probably are just like me. Like, I'm uncomfortable with public recognition or like. Yeah, we're we're, we're the being same. praised. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't because. Yes, I did this show and I started recording and all that, but there's a, like a lot that goes into podcasting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually was asked today, shout out to my favorite baristas in Starbucks. They're trying to start a pod. They were asking me a ton of questions this morning. But nice. um, there's a lot that goes into it. Like, I didn't win these awards by myself. Yeah. Right now, I, I do have a team and, and, and Kaba produces the show. So when we won the video pod, um, I, th- I called Kaba and I was like, "Yo, Kaba, we gotta win." It wasn't like I gotta win. We yeah. Gotta win. So no, I, I get that. I, <clears throat> I get that all the. I get where you're coming from because mm-hmm. I get the accolades and I get the recognition and, tell, and people telling me all the time that I'm doing my damn thing and everything. Yeah. But I, I'm, that's when my imposter syndrome kicks in, you know. Yeah. So like, I appreciate it, but at the same time, it kind of makes me awkward, you know, because you know, I feel like I've been kicked down so many times in my life that, you know, praise and compliments is an odd feeling. It is. It feels kind of like icky to me. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like it. Um, and like it's, ha- it's happening a lot lately, and I don't like the feeling, so I try to dodge. <laughs> Even like my birthday, like people ask me, you know, I'm turning forty this year. Oh, okay. Um, like my staff that works uh, with me, they they they're trying to figure out when's my birthday because I don't tell me people my actual birth date. If mm. if, if you follow me, you probably could guess it. Um. And I just feel uncomfortable in pub being publicly praised. But that being said, yeah. that you see, that's a trait that we share. Another reason why I wanted to bring you on the show is besides that you podcast and you, you act and is is the voice comparison. So <laughs> um, I've been told, like, I don't know who would be Mario, who would be Wario, but I've been told that, <laughs> Yo. that, like, you're the Jersey version of me or I'm the New York version of you. Yeah. Um, and that we needed to do an episode together just so people could sonically, like, I want people to listen to this episode. Yeah. Because I'm going to listen to this on a train ride because right. Jason's got a fantastic voice. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be one of the greatest ASMR videos of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but talk to me about first uh, first place. No. <laughs> Wait, and I promise myself, everybody always messes up the name of your pod. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. promise myself, I know it by heart. First class, yeah. second place. Yeah. <laughs> I promise myself I wouldn't. Uh, it's all good, it's all good. Because I know a lot of people say, uh, you know, first place, second place, or... Yo, somebody actually once called it, and they were being serious about mm-hmm. it. it. It was a complete mistake. They called it first class, last place. <laughs> Wait, and then uh, the original name of the show mm-hmm. was first class... Second place. I remember, no, no, there was an original name oh. that you guys were kicking around because I was watching this episode. Um, oh, uh, Temperatures Rising or something like that? That or, they, they, it was first class and something else. And, and you guys were like, oh, I'm going to call up the girl that, that came up with the name or or helped you come up with the name. Mm. I'm trying to remember what it was, but I thought it was pretty funny. Anywho. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who have never watched or listened to the episode, what is first class, second place about? And then you, there's two pods that you do. So. Yeah, so uh, with first class, second place, first and foremost, I got to tell people that it's not an interview. It's a, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation. Okay. So 
in the beginning, I started doing interviews mainly because I was just looking for people to come on my show because mm. I didn't know how to do this on my own. I was a newbie. I, I got the cheapest microphone that you could think of, and I was recording in my uh, my apartment closet, which, I, you know, the apartment I still live in to this day. A lot day. of podcasters yes. started recording in closets. Right, right. but so. that's the point. I had to start somewhere. <clears throat> and it just, um, I, w- I guess I was really inspired by other podcasts or other shows like Hot Ones or whatever and see how they were good with interviewees. And um, that's how I kind of to like develop my craft, for lack of a better term. Yeah. But then afterwards, I realized that a lot of my a lot of my audience realized that they actually liked it more when it's actual conversations and discussions as mm-hmm. opposed to just an interview. So maybe I'll throw in an interview question here and there, like in the first five ten minutes. But that's just to get the ball rolling, and then most likely I'll hear something or I pick up on something, and then afterwards we'll turn that into a conversation or discussion. And um, as far as like the name, first class, second place, everybody asks me this all the time. It's basically an allegory of an underdog story because I feel like I, with my talent and my and everything that I do, I feel like I could do the very best job possible, but I don't forget where I come from with humble beginnings. So okay. I, I feel like it's also a representation of people out there that are first class people, but we come from a we, we come from humble beginnings. God, I like that. I like a lot of thought into that name. Yeah, yeah, no, I just, oh my God, before I came up with the name, I just, uh, there was a whole bunch of names that I, I was thinking of, like first, it was like as basic as the Jason Enrique show or something. Um, <laughs> Damn, shots already fired. <laughs> shots already fired. Nah. <laughs> uh, uh, one of them was, uh, I don't know why I thought, because I think I was there listening. There still could be a Jason Enrique show in they the could future. Be. So. They could be, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um uh, I think I was listening to Mob Deep one time, and I thought about temperatures rising, but it was also during COVID, so I didn't want people to think that this is going to be like a political show or anything like that. And then um, I remember listening to uh, one of my my radio heroes, uh, Joe Beningo, who's actually become a pretty good friend of mine from WFAM. Who you've had on the, on the pod. Yes, yeah. had him yeah. on twice, and uh, more future episodes coming up. Um, so I remember he was talking about the Jets, as he usually does, and this is when they fired Mike McCagnan in the worst possible time. Mm-hmm. And he says something on the radio where he's like, this organization is not even a first class, they're not even a second class organization, they're more like eighth class. And I don't know why, but I laughed my ass off when I heard that, and it stuck with me for a while, and then as my as weird as my brain works, I just remember thinking first class, second place, I like the one and two, mm-hmm. I like the difference between, it. it's, it's, it's a double entendre in a sort of way, and I just ran with it, and I just had to make sure that I rolled off the tongue uh, you know, the most important thing is I know how to say it. I, I need to know how to say my phone, my own fucking show. <laughs> but when you do other pods, does yeah. it, does it, like, I get the same, I have the same thing. So yeah. w- when I do somebody else's show, um, you know, that I, like, my friends, I usually go on my friends' pods and they'll say, the Rick A show, wow, what a clever name. How'd you come up with that one? <laughs> and it wasn't like I didn't try to find a different name. It was right, just... Right. Uh, when I started the pod, it was me, my brother, and, and a friend of mine, and I was the only one doing everything. They wanted to just do a podcast, yeah. and they just wanted to talk about sports, but they didn't want to put the work in. So, mm. I, like, I, I was trying to think of a good name, and, you know, um, one of the names was something with the word report, because I kind of was like, you know, people are going to get the sports report from the point of view of, a non-sports expert. I see. Or like I, my selling not point. A journalist, basically. Yeah, my, my elevator pitch was always this. The podcast is going to be a conversation you normally hear in a bar about sports. Slightly more mm. intellectual because yeah. I, I'll have someone that knows more. Um, but I couldn't figure out a clever name and I just went to Joe Budden around and I was like, I'll name this podcast later. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I stuck the Rick H show on it. And then as I started climbing episode numbers, mm. I was like, I'll just leave it on there. Yeah, it's but, your brand. You know? yeah. yeah. But the problem is, you know, I've had like, you know, like I had Jasmine Ruiz as my co-host. Shout out to Jasmine Ruiz. Yeah. yeah. Jazz is like like a great co And I wanted to be able to share with my co-host, like the show and the name. And, yeah. you know, and and because my name is on it, it's like difficult. Like Right, right. So. I get it. There it is, but you 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 got you got that point, you know. Yeah. So we're very similar, you and I. Um, I, I know you get this question a lot, and this question I don't like, but I'm gonna ask you anyways. Go ahead. Yeah. What is your favorite episode? What was your favorite uh, uh, guest on the pod? Um, 
Honestly, I would say that my favorite guest, and I say this all the time, is the one that I did with Joe Beningo because yeah. not only did I actually get a chance to actually work with mm -hmm. my radio hero, one of my radio heroes, but his stamp of approval was meant everything in the world to me. It was one of the best things that I could ever receive. And looking back on that episode, I look back and I'm like, I'm sitting next to a veteran, a legend, yeah. and I'm actually holding on my own. So I feel like I'm really supposed to be doing this. And uh, But I would have to say really my favorite episode ever of amongst all is the one that I did very recently a couple of weeks ago. It was, it was my very first solo show. Mm -hmm. I had no guest. It was the first time that I ever did a, a, a regular just solo show. It was just me. And it was, it was really important for me because I needed to prove to myself and everybody else, but more importantly to myself, that I can do this without anybody's help. Um, I have a lot to say. And during that particular time, I was going through it really bad. I had some mental health issues and some personal things that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it was very cathartic for me. I feel like I needed to do this episode for me and just spill my guts out and share everybody with what's going on with me. And when I was finished with it, I felt... I felt relieved, I felt liberated, and yeah. the fact that everybody was really uh, receptive and appreciative of the fact that I was so vulnerable and I was so open, that made me feel even more better in realizing that I am supposed to be doing this. So that's gonna be at the top of my list so far. I, it, it, it works on so many levels because you're, you're, you're building an audience. As me, still to this day, you know, my show's been through several transformations, and every time we're recording an episode, you're building an audience. So yeah. it could be someone tuning in that day. Um, and being vulnerable is just something you have to do. But I try to have like more comedy. I know yeah. people going through things and I, 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 if I'm gonna take someone away for an hour, I wanna try to as much as possible, A, get them to walk away with something that they thought was really funny and something that they learned. Mm. Um, and I tried the interview route in the beginning. <clears throat> it's great to get your feet wet and get going. Right. Um, and you meet a ton of interesting people, and then you strike up, like, the relationship you have with Joe Beningo. That's happened to me yeah. on three different occasions with people that I never in my life thought I would get to talk to. Yeah. Um, so this show has taken off. But you also do a sports pod. Yes, yes. Uh so I do uh, a sports show live on YouTube. It's the only thing that I do live. Well, actually, no, I do an IG live every now and then. But um, this is live from 10 to 2 every Saturday mm -hmm. on YouTube on Bravely TV. It's the studio that I record out of, Bravely Shout Studios. out to Marv, by yeah, the way. Shout I out forgot, to Marv, man. I, I forgot to do that in the opening, but <laughs> shout out to Marv. Yo, shout out to Marv. Shout out to Hugo, my co-host. Mm -hmm. I love all of you guys. I love everybody there at Bravery Studios. But, yeah, no, we um, – so Marv had a brilliant idea where he wanted to do a network like a TV network for Bravery Studios. It's called Bravely TV. Mm. And there's a whole bunch of other programs that they do out of there. There's a there's a, um, a, a fitness podcast. Uh, there's me and Hugo. We're, big, we're probably the biggest sports fanatics there. So they put us together as uh, hosts for the uh, for this uh, Yo! BTV Sports, which is the mm -hmm. name of it. They got one called Hood Famous um, with my boy Matthew Zaytoon. Basically, he goes to all the famous hood spots, uh, you know, kind of like a, a – um, Guy Fieri type of shit. Yeah, and uh, but he's really good at it. He actually went viral on one of his uh, one of his reels for uh, a chicken spot in Patterson. So he's really doing his thing there. Uh, but yeah, no, that's we're, we're trying to figure out some other avenues there. Like I think that we should incorporate maybe something music based. Mm -hmm. But that's basically how the sports podcast started. And we're episode, we're twenty episodes in. We're about to do twenty one on this Saturday. Uh, gonna is it'll be out by the time this comes out. Um, but yeah, no, I just love the chemistry between me and you go. Uh, it's funny because the only team that we have really in common is the Yankees. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a Jets fan, unfortunately. He's a Cowboys fan, like one of the biggest Cowboy fans you'll ever meet. But <laughs> I'm sorry, it's yeah, it's okay. A cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like, I think my bad, you go. <laughs> it's all good, man. He you say it's all good. But no, I just I love the camaraderie between the two of us mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, another reason that shows that we're supposed to be doing this is a lot of people have not only requested to come on as guests, but some of them have said, even my cousin, shout out to Steve at, at Hackensack, he said like, yo, if I go on the show, man, I got to be prepared because be, I'm going to be walking in the lines then because mm -hmm. you and you go knew your shit. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes me feel good to know that we know what the hell we're doing with our, with our platform. So that, that's good. You mentioned, so you're from Jersey, I'm from yeah. New York. You mentioned some of your teams. We don't line up in any of these lineups, no. except for the Knicks. Except for the Knicks, yeah. So we'll save the Knicks for later. Mm -hmm. um, you're a Jets fan. 
unfortunately. And I, I, <laughs> I wanted to ask this question because I started, you know, the NFL playoffs are going on right now. Yeah. And I think besides the Dallas thing, I think Philadelphia was the biggest shock to yeah. everyone. Would you rather be a Philly team where you're division lead, you know, and then you go one and six to finish it and eliminate it in the wild card or like your Jets, mm. so Philly or Jets, in a situation where you needed a piece, you got that piece, you added other pieces around them, and then four plays in, your season's done. Would you rather know the outcome or – at least get into the playoffs and losing the wild card. Well, that's interesting because I haven't sweep my team hasn't sniffed the playoffs in 13 years. So <laughs> <laughs> obviously naturally I would say the playoffs, but um I'm one of those type of people in in my in my personal life where I will fuck up. I will really fuck up in the beginning, mm -hmm. but I will use that as to learn what I can do to fix it and what I can learn and take that as a lesson and then go forward. So as weird as and as crazy as it sounds, I think I would go the Jets route because we know what our deficiencies are. Mm -hmm. I just, I just hope that I, I just wish I had the confidence that they're going to get it right. And then Philly, like, what happened there? They were. I, I, you know what? I think it's a, I think it's a matter of two things. One, it's a Super Bowl hangover because you know they, they made it to the Super Bowl, they didn't win, but I think it took a lot out of them. And I think because they got off to a great start in the beginning of the season at 10-1, and 1, they were feeling themselves a little bit. They were leading the NFC East by far, even though, you know, Dallas is kind of on their heels. And I think uh, ego got in the way. I think egos got in the way. I think a lot of clashing. And uh, me being familiar with teams that have toxic locker rooms, I mm -hmm. think I know a toxic locker room when I see it. And I think that's what's going on in Philly right now. You know, you got A.J. Brown that, you know, is, is totally disinterested, has scrubbed his entire social media off anything Eagles related. Wow. Uh, they had a they had a players-only meeting. They had a players-only meeting. And when you have a player-only meeting, I that's mean, the when situation you, know, is you, know, you know that there's something yeah. rotten in Dagmar. Mm -hmm. Because you don't even want the coaches involved. You got to get... You got you. You got to go with the guys that are on the field, and you got to work the shit out internally. Yeah. So, and the fact that he even got leaked out that there was a players only meeting. I don't know who leaked it out, but the fact that it got leaked out, you know, they don't. They don't know staff, how, they probably. Don't, they don't know how to. Yeah, probably. But that just goes to show that there's, uh, you know, not as all good in. It's not always sunny in Philadelphia right now. It's not. It's one of my favorite shows, but <laughs> I love it's that not. show too. But yeah. I, I think uh, fundamentals also has to play in that because yeah, um, if you watch the Eagles. They had a great defense at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And I don't I think they got into a nice stride or a nice uh a run in the beginning. And I think first of all, Nick Sirianni, not a great head coach. No, opinion. he's not. No. The guys I think I think kind the, of a douchebag. Yeah, no, not not kind of. Is <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think another factor is that they got exposed. I think the rest of the mm -hmm. league caught up with how to beat them and how they are, you know, with the tush push and everything. Yeah. And they figured it out. They basically cracked the code. And as far as coaching is concerned, I think that when they lost both the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator because they got head coaching jobs elsewhere, yeah. I think those were the re those two were the reasons why they went as far as they did last year. And, they were, you know, Sirianni was basically just, you know, being the face of the franchise. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just shows – I think he got exposed that he's not a good head coach. There's also, if you watch the Eagles, it's like uh, in the fundamentals, mm -hmm. the tackling is horrendous in the NFL. Yeah, well, the, the secondary is horrendous. They, they can't, they can't, they can't tackle anybody. They can't block anybody. Terrible <laughs> angles yeah. to shoot at the wide receivers, like that play that just happened this past weekend. Oh um, yes, yeah, I know. It was know. live on the Manicast, and Ray Lewis was actually on, on there. And Ray's like, oh, no, 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 no. Tackling is all about <laughs> angles. Like, yeah, they, they, they missed, I think it was three people missed the receiver. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of hand tackles. Just w tackling 101 is grapple around the waist, yeah. go to shoulder. Yeah. But I'm also thinking, I'll give them a pass, maybe shoot them some bail. You think it's maybe the rule changes and all the illegal hits and... You know, yeah, all that. I'm all glad the flags. that you said that because that's another thing. Yeah. That's why the that's why one thing that all NFL fans can agree on is that the officiating has been horrendous. Awful. For years. Yeah, and it seem but it seems to be getting worse. Uh, I didn't think it would get any worse after that Green Bay Seattle game where, oh, it is a touchdown. Oh no, it's not a touchdown. And then afterwards they have to figure it out. And yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean don't... it goes back even with uh was it Des Bryant? Yeah, Des Bryant. Touchdown what was touchdown? Des Bryant playing? It was it was in the playoffs actually. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. It was yeah. in Green Bay. Yeah, it, it, he caught the ball, but I guess he didn't have control of it. It looked like he didn't have control of it at the end. But 
you know, it's 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 so iffy. Like he looks like he caught it, but it kind of doesn't look like he caught it. So I don't know. It's it's mixed. I every, just, ca- every cowboy fan will tell you it's a it's a, it's a catch. Problem with the NFL, it, it it's a reactive organization. It's not like and I have kind of the same issue with the NBA. They, they something happens in a playoff or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they go immediately and they change the rule book. Yep. And then it it, it they change the rule book so much. It, the officiating is not going to catch up at a certain point. They're going to be behind all the time, if, if and they're going to be blowing calls if you keep changing the rule book at all the time. Same thing is now happening with baseball. Like, I get it. They want to make it fun, and they want to give the players room and stuff. like. I, I understand all that, but I, I do like the human element in any sports game. Yes. Yeah. So and that's, and that's if a call is made, it, it was made. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, yeah. You know. And that's what frustrates me about baseball. Now it's it's all about algebra. It's not yeah. about heart and gut now. Oh, that's a that's a yeah. Well, pretty pretty soon, yeah. Pretty soon there'll be no no umpires. There'll yeah. just be They're computerized actually, balls and strikes. And uh, they're testing a system where I know, it's, yeah. it's a computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I like the I like the the added human element, like you said, the mm-hmm. human error. It sucks when it's a really big call and maybe it goes the other way, but you know, for the most part. They get they do get it right for they the do. most part. And there was actually an umpire this year. I forgot his name. I should have. I'll probably post it. So Angel Hernandez? They, oh, no. He's, okay. he's the worst. <laughs> I, him and Las Diaz, they always like. But uh. there was a, <clears throat> an umpire this year. He was 98.6% correct on balls and strikes. You see? That's a, that's, to be that accurate, it, it takes, like, the guy knows the game very well. So, but I like the human element because I feel like, you know, it's the, that's the game. I just think fans started complaining, and that's when they brought the replay in, and people were like, oh, they're going to get the calls right. But once you introduce an electronic element to a game, it kind of ruins the – because when we go to a peewee league game or to a high school football game, there's no replay. There's none of this equipment. It's the actual game, how it's meant to be played. Yeah, whatever's the call is the call. The call stands. And it stands. Exactly. And you know what? What we won't get from that game, let's say I'm in the opposing team that lost. Yeah. And the call didn't go my way. As, a, as an athlete, and this is just me as a person, this is who I am, I'm going to remember that play. Yeah. And I'm going to put it somewhere. And I'm going to work on it, work on it, work on it. And the next time it happens, like, I love it when I see these kids that lost. Like, even the pro athletes or the college athletes just standing there watching the entire ticker day parade, the trophy ceremony. And then next year, you see them raising the trophy. It happened this year. I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, it's, yeah. It's not a rags to riches, but it's almost like... A- like the under underdog, like yeah, you know, you it happened have to with fail. the Wolverines. You have to fail in order oh, yeah. to lose. I yeah, think the Michigan. quarterback of Michigan stood there and watched the whole thing, and then this year he won the. So that's what I feel like. That lights a fire under somebody. Like I get it, you want to get certain things right, but leave the human aspect into the game. Yeah, and that's why the officiating in the NFL has been awful for years. Because the fans will complain, the organization will complain, all these billionaire owners will complain to the, because uh, they pay the commissioner. You know, I'm pretty sure Jerry's made a couple of those calls. <laughs> and, and and then Jerry and then uh, Roger Goodell is just reactive, like, oh, let's, right. uh, the committee of competition, right. which I think Jerry was the head of a couple times. What so. surprise me. But, you know, like, then I, every now and then, you get your pound of flesh mm-hmm. where, you know, the referees clearly mess up that call against the Cowboys and the Lions. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards they demote those referees that they're not going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so happened recently, yeah. That happened recently, yeah, yeah. So but they, I, they should, that would be the solution. To right, that. but that's what I'm saying. That Like, that's just the NFL giving the fans their pound of flesh mm-hmm. so that they can f- forget about it, move on, and then, you know, keep on playing games. It's like that. the exciting thing about the NFL is anything can happen in, during any game. And the fact that the Buccaneers beat the Eagles, <laughs> to me, is shocking. You know what? I'm still shocked that the Jets beat the Eagles this year. It's the first time ever in our history beating them. In a and they beat season. the Pats on his way out yeah. in the last game. So you, you would you would pick the Jets situation where I, I think so because you got your guy and then you yeah. have to figure out what's – Listen, I, 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 I'm probably talking out of my ass when I say this, but I feel like <laughs> there's a lot of things – 
I, I feel like there's a lot of things that if I was a general manager, I would be able to fix. And I don't know if we would be a Super Bowl contender, but we'd definitely be in the playoffs. Who, the Jets? I think the Jets... It always feels like that, though, right? Yeah, like when you're, you like know when it, you're a competent, it, not casual fan, like you're an actual fan of these teams. Because you know what it is, I, because I, since I've I've seen so much horrendous football for the last decade, and but I'm a football fan, so I watch other teams as well, mm. and I see what o- other good organizations do, and I'm like, why the hell can't we do that? Yeah. So, like, it almost looks like you know I do that. You know the uh, what is it called the armchair quarterback. But you do it with the GM where you're sitting on the couch and you just pretend to be the GM of your franchise. Yeah. yeah. Like, which you know how many is, which times. That's kind of what Aaron Rodgers is doing right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I solved the Patriots problem like four years ago. You know, I fired <laughs> Belichick four years ago in my head. We drafted a quarterback. Even uh, I was telling you before we started filming the Jordan Love situation. Yeah. yeah. I knew 100% he wasn't going to fall to us, but that's who we wanted. Yeah. Make the move, trade up. Why don't, you know, like, He's... this could be your, your future quarterback. And we wound up with Mac Jones. Mac Jones. <laughs> I mean. As, as me and uh, Hugo will call him, Wack 100. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I want Jordan. You mentioned Jordan Love. I, I think Jordan Love and CJ Stroud deserve a tremendous amount of credit oh, for yeah. being rookies. I think Love more than CJ Stroud because Love is following a Hall of Fame quarterback. Shout out Aaron Jones. Yeah. yeah, Aaron Jones helped him out a lot. Yeah, but if he had a monster game against the Cowboys too, man. What was that? That he had a monster game against the Cowboys. Yeah, they, yeah, he's just a cowboy killer. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They yeah. Had no answers for him. That but day. that's the recipe for a rookie quarterback. You need a. You need to be able to have a reliable running back that can do that, and take less of throwing attempts away from him. And then the quarterback, as they're developing, they'll figure out what throws they need to learn how to make. Right. Listen, well, Fanny, any I think Jordan's uh sorry to cut you off, Kyle, but Jordan's uh composure is what I yeah. like the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like he's been in the playoff plenty of times. Yeah. I was gonna say for any any franchise with a, a young quarterback and you know, you're just getting your first taste of the playoffs, just find out how you converse the Cowboys first. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever what, whatever you need, whatever you need to happen, it will happen. Because besides, Yo, figure out seating ahead of time, drop some games. <laughs> besides cowboy fans, oh man, did anybody really think? I didn't even care who who was going to quarterback for the Packers. I didn't care. Whoever the quarterback is is going to win that game against against the Cowboys. So I ended up. My team ended up being the homosexuals, and. <laughs> Coincidentally enough, I was the Buffalo Bills of fantasy football. I always made it to the championship, never got to win the championship. Mm. This kid renames my team, the Romosexuals, and I win the championship. But <laughs> he tells me, before the playoffs start, I walk up to him, I have a conversation with him, and I tell him, you think the Cowboys are ready? He's like, this year, we put Jerry Jones in the ring of honor. The Jerry Jones curse has been lifted. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, sorry. Jerry Jones is the actual curse. Of the <laughs> That's why I know I didn't even correct you. I was like, yeah, yeah, there it goes. He's like, we finally put Jimmy Johnson in the ring of honor, and you know we're we're gonna, we're gonna get over the hump. Playoff start. I saw Green Bay uh, versus Dallas. That's that's what it was. The first matchup. Yeah, wild yeah. card. Yeah. yeah, I was like, mm, Jordan Love, first game, Cowboys. That's a win. That's a victory. I didn't even hesitate. I, you know, I was more shocked Philly and Tampa than the yeah. Green Bay beating Dallas. I don't know, man. I really I, like and I Green said, Bay was steady the whole season. I was, I was really convinced that this was uh, going to be Dallas's year. I think they were actually, like I said, I didn't think they. Why were, though? Like, what made you look the at the Dak Dallas hype. team? Well, had, the, the, there the, was a lot of it this the year. Dak hype. Uh, I'm a big CD Lamb fan, and that defense. That defense is all over the place. Michael Parsons looked like he was the second coming of Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, yeah. I don't Only against the Giants, though. The be- yeah. No, the beginning of the season, coming into the season, their whole story was: is the offense going to be able to catch up with the defense? Yes, is CD right. Lamb going to turn into that that receiver that Which they've been I waiting? Which I think he is. He is. Lamb is legit. I think he's he a monster. Is. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think like he solidified kid. and made his own name. But I think that's what it was. It was. You know they have this phenomenal defense with all these stars, and they have so much potential on the offense that once Dak started getting his MVP name, his name thrown in the MVP votings and stuff, you were like, okay, there's something there's going something on there. over there in Dallas. Right. Now, I was the, like, oh, no. 
This is just what happens with a well, season team. Well, that first game against the Giants. Well, it was a, well, they put up a 40-burger. Yeah, they, they were it was coming the Giants. Off, yeah, but they were coming off the line so fast. And, and Micah Parsons. You guys have the worst offensive line in I, football. I understand that. And that's the Everybody only thing. Everybody comes off the Jerry line Jerry like Jones, that. who's also the GM of the Cowboys. Jerry built a great offensive line and a great defensive line. Mm-hmm. And I'll give him all the credit in the world because the Giants have been trying to build one for eons <laughs> and nah, have yeah. failed. But that first game, they were coming off the line so fast. I was like... This defense is going to be a big problem this yeah. year. And also, they were undefeated at home this year. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, I drank the Kool-Aid. I drank the Cowboy Kool-Aid this year. And I really thought that they were going to go farther. I didn't think they were going to be Super Bowl contender. I think that I think that's still in the 49ers' uh, uh, hands. But I, I really thought that they really had a great chance to get into the NFC Championship. But uh, it just, uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson breaking the curse, anything didn't happen. It didn't happen. Maybe next year. What, what, what do you think they have to do? I, uh, to me, I think... Hey, Jerry has to sell the team. These small yeah. little, small little simple small, changes. Yeah, small, I was gonna say that's that's tiny not little. Jerry has to sell the team. They have to relocate the stadium, and they have to get a brand new quarterback. I mean, other than that, I think. I mean, I don't know, man. I think it's a coaching problem because I actually like Dak Prescott. I think he's a pretty decent. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I I think that it not everything was all his fault. Now, don't get me wrong. He was not good in the wild card game. He they they deserve to lose the way that they were playing. He hasn't been good in any playoff game. Yeah, but I think that if he was, if he actually had a good, a call play, a play caller, you know, because Mike McCarthy, he's had this. Well, he's awful. He, yeah, he's, yeah. That's, he's got a ring because yeah. of Rodgers. Right. That's that's the only thing, and I, I just don't think that, I just don't think that Mark McCar- Mike McCarthy, when it comes to playoff time, I think it's at just adding to the to the detriment of them going forward, and. Even in past Cowboy years, like I think maybe in his second season as a coach, he would make some of these egregious plays, especially in the playoffs, that they deserve to lose. The way the, well, the play calling was that they were calling. He, he gave up the play calling for I think a couple seasons, and and then he took it back. But then he but, took it back, and then look how that happened. look how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think there's a simple solution for that team like the Eagles, right? So the Eagles are about to lose Jason Kelsey. Who he's just retired, like retiring. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he's probably the best center I've ever seen play football. Yeah, he's a he was a beast, bro. And that means you got to get a new center, plug him into that line, and it's gonna take a while for that to yeah. gel. Centers don't grow on trees, bro. They don't. There's a reason why. There's a reason why centers don't ever really hit the uh, the free agent market mm-hmm. because they have they're they're that, they're that valuable. I mean, look at. Pay Manning still with Jeff Saturday. Yeah, Eli Manning does a show with his center. Yeah. Um, the Jets. We had Nick Mangold for. Oh over. my God! Yeah. I, I loved him. Oh, he's one of my favorites. And then look, we have we've we haven't been able to replace him ever since. It's a it's it's musical chairs right now on the offensive line. So yeah, I guess the Jets have a better situation. Uh, do you think the Jets will be better than Philadelphia next year? Wow, good question. Looking ahead, no. I also don't think they have a better uh, record. Um, no, no, I mean, like, they don't have a better, like, I wouldn't take their situation. I feel like at least with the Eagles, yeah, you have, you have you're a losing a center, but you, you have, have a, defense. a defense that, you know, maybe some tweaks here or maybe mm-hmm. just some more experience. You have your star wide receiver. You got to handle that because he's becoming a diva, but you have a star there. You have there. your running game, you well, you know, your you running game have- and you have your quarterback. Mm. The Jets is a question mark on almost everything but the defense. No, that's not. I wouldn't I, say I, that. No, I wouldn't say that because you know. Well, we'll see what happens with Rodgers. I mean, that's scary yeah. because he's turning. That's 40, the biggest question. That, mark. that offensive line is the biggest question mark. If you ask, that's me. the worst yeah. part. Now, but I we got, got Garrett, Rodgers being the but best. We got the Garrett worst Wilson, part. who has shown that he's one of the best wide receivers in the league. He was Rookie of the Year uh, last season. Uh, Brees Hall is no scrub. He kn- Brees that's Hall a, is that's a, a great. Uh, Brees, yeah, Brees that's is a, great. That's a great running game they got there. Um, he can only get better when they get an O line. Right. An O line and also another another elite receiver that can help Garrett Wilson out, you know, and also tight ends. The Jets haven't had a tight end since John Abraham. No, not John Abraham. The fucking Dustin Keller or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Wait. I, so uh, Garrett Wilson just changed his number to five. Next year he's going to wear number five. Yeah. He used to wear seventeen. Yeah. That number is currently worn by Thomas Morstead. No, seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Oh. In the Raiders. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. And you know what? 
Aaron Rodgers is, is the acting GM of the Jets right now. He practically Go owns. Ahead. He practically give, owns the Jets right give now. Give the old man more. Let him hold your franchise <laughs> hostage. <laughs> Let him hold your franchise hostage. They have to hostage. at Go this ahead. point. They, they have to because you put yourself in that position by putting all your marbles into his onto basket. the Rodgers. Yeah. I mean, this That's is a happened. Woody Johnson thing. Because obviously Woody's the one that pulled the trigger on the iron. You could literally go get Devontae. You could go get the draft a fucking center that's fucking the greatest center of all time. You could go do all of that. If Rodgers winds up getting hurt or is even just a little iffy next year. Well, that was their biggest that's mistake. The, well, that's, yeah, well, we already got... We already got guys that Rogers wanted. We got Randall Cobb. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get Bakhtiari, but he stayed in Green Bay. Yeah, Randall, what's the receiver, Randall Cobb. Uh, what the no, but fuck was that? What's the receiver that? that he kept dropping passes? He played with him. In Did Green Randall Bay Cobb also. even play? Oh, um, he played Lazar. once or twice. Lazar. 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 So they got Lazar, um, and they went and got um, the offensive coach. What's his name? Oh, which they Daniel can't Hackett. even hack it. Yeah. Which they can't get rid of. No. So in any other situation, he would have been fired in season. They have to yeah. double down yeah. on Rodgers yeah. for next year. And I think that there is a reason, besides Garrett wanting the number five back, yeah. I think there is a reason that 17 got freed up. And, I, yes, Antonio Pierce came in. He kind of changed the Raiders' culture. And I think yeah. that that's the Raiders' coach. I think he should stay as the Raiders' coach. If the Raiders do not sign, keep him, and take the interim tag away, that's a huge mistake. Yeah. I'm just worried that the Raiders are going to want to talk to either Harbaugh or Belichick. But I think they got no, that. I think so you might have to do it just Belichick's to appeal gonna to your talk fan to the, base. Like, yo, yeah. Like, we, due diligence? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. okay, we sat them down, and we decided we're going to start with our But I think the fan base is 100% sold on Pierce. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So I, it, 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 just, it just makes too much sense not to give him, like, actual crack. Like, let him be the actual head coach. Um, he's going to have to learn X's and O's, which he does not right. have. But they also need a real quarterback. I mean, Aiden O'Connell is not going to do it. Jimmy but G is a is a. They got their running away. back though. That's the beauty of the they situation. Got the back. Yep. It, it, he's gonna. I think he's gonna model the Raiders to the, the throwback, the, the ground and pound type of football that, and he's gonna build on the. Max Crosby said, "If Pierce is not the trade him, if yeah. Pierce is not the head coach, trade him." Yeah, well, that just goes to show yeah. one of your favorite, one of your best players on your team. Already made up in, my, in his mind who he wants as the coach. Yeah, yeah who he wants to play for. Right there. Mm -hmm. Belichick, you mentioned him. Yeah. Oh, God. Ugh. I've. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My dream sorry to my, has always my been to see Bill coach the Giants just once. You know what? And, and it's not going to happen. Cause, cause and that's his. Cause that's, he would do that too. That's his fantasy. Mm -hmm. He's always wanted to be the Giants head coach. Right. Um, that's I don't see it happening. Yeah. I, I thought he would retire, which was what I would do. But uh, I, I don't think so because he's meeting with Atlanta and he's and uh, Jerry's already right. Well, gonna pull him in. The only Defensive. reason I know for a fact that Bill Belichick was not gonna retire is because one of the things that he wants to do is he wants to break Don Shula's record for most wins in a se in, in a season. Mm -hmm. So he he wants that record. And that only counts as a head coach. As a head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Like John Shula has the record, Bill Belichick wants to break it. Because well, Bill has all the other yeah. head coach oh, yeah. records. I was with you, you know with what? the whole Giants what do, thing. What do what do guys with power always want? They want more power. What do guys with accolades want? They want more accolades. So Bill Belichick may have six rings, jangling, jangling. He may have all he he may have all the praise and this, that, and the third. But no, he wants more. He wants to double down on it and beat Don Shula for the most wins in NFL history. I think he also wants to win without Brady. That's another factor too. He want because Brady already won without him, mm. and he wants to prove that and he pushed Brady to, out of New England. Yeah, because, they leaked the conversation, which is crazy. I know there was a reporter that said that Tom Brady was all Belichicked out, and mm. that's probably why he's not the Patriots head coach anymore because he thinks that Robert Kraft is all Belichicked out. Yeah, but Bill went to Kraft and told him Tom can't play anymore. Yeah, he he's lost Jimmy a G. step. He wanted Jimmy G. And he wanted to try to keep Jimmy G. And um, that kind of left a sour taste in Tom's mouth. Yep. And Robert Kraft chose the coach over the quarterback. And then uh, in a conversation what Kraft was having with someone, they recorded Kraft cursing out because I, I thought you said Tom can't play. He just won a fucking Super Bowl with Tampa. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be interesting what happens with Bill. But that's Eagles. always been my thing. I always wanted to – I think one of the best 30 for 30s is the two Bills. Yeah. Is, and I, I, the guys never, like, there's been so many times where the Giants had an opening that they could have just asked for permission. 
he would have left New England to come and coach the Giants. For sure. Because that's what he wants. That's what he's always coveted. You guys had mm. so many opportunities, too. I mean, during Ben McAdoo and Pat Shermer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, once who, Brady left, I felt like people should have just started, like, hey, maybe some phone but calls. But I think like, what's going on over there? the organization is, is sold on, on Dable, and I don't think Dable's going to go anywhere anytime soon. No, he won, he won Coach of the Year, his rookie year. So what I was telling you was – I. I know that you say he wants to go after the the, the coaching record, yeah. he wants to go but after I was like, record, if yeah. if Belichick was to take the defensive coordinator of any of these teams, would take them a lot of these teams over the hump. Yeah, you throw him, you know, just to, for shits and giggles, you throw him on the Eagles. I don't think the Eagles have any of those defensive meltdowns they had at the end of the season. Of course not. No, no, no. You know, like I that think would that. Not happen. But I don't know if his he would, if, I don't think if, he, I don't know if it's ego or just his name or that he's chasing the record, whatever the case may be. I don't think he'll take that role. But even on the Giants, I think it'll be a great role for him to come go to the Giants and be a I'm defensive back to coordinator. Your first, as, I as, think as his a, defensive as a head coach mind or as, a, or as a DC. No, no, I I would prefer him as a DC. I'm done with his head coaching days. Fuck, I'm done with that. <laughs> as a DC, I think he's still one of the best defensive minds would you, right now. If you're Bill and you get offered. He's going to get offered whatever job he wants. Yeah. This, this is like the head coaching carousel right yeah. now. Right. Would I mean, you do that or would you take – I think the only one that he would consider would to come back is the Giants, D.C. That's the only one that I think might have an op because he would be going but back to But even that would make role. sense. Like, I don't know if to him it would be like taking a step down from a head coach to a coordinator, but it's just like – you want to go get another ring? Just show people. Giants know. would have to guarantee that he's right. the and head also, coach right after. Yeah. And also, Dable you, know, you have to also that. consider um, the fallout between Dable and Wink Martindale, and you know there was. A, oh, a, Wink's a, leaving. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I don't know if this is true, but there may be a possibility where Dable is such a hard nosed blue collar, lunch pail type of head coach that it's actually rubbing p- people, uh, players, and in the organization the wrong way. Um, so maybe that might be a little bit more incentive to get rid of him if John Mara were inclined to do so just to get open, just to get Belichick. Because if it's going to happen the same way that it did this season, who knows if there's going to be a mutiny in that locker room next year. I mean, I, there's, there's something to that. There's a couple of times where Bla- Dable uh, went after – he went after Daniel Jones yeah, live on television. Mm-hmm. He went after – I forgot who was the other player – and uh, there's a couple of times where the camera catches him and he's like disgusted yeah. and looking at the player and like he, he, he got it. I mean, in the radio, people say he's just got that type of of trust with the players. Yeah, He's got that kind of relationship. But I think that it has – losing makes things worse. It wears on you. Yeah. So I, I think that to have a guy in your face and you're losing the game, I don't care who it is, it might – play with your your you might develop some some type of feeling so from a player's perspective you might be right yeah. but i think that joe shane and uh mommy and daddy are and, fighting again and mara <laughs> is not ready for for uh, to move on from that i think they think Dable is like the quarterback whisperer and they're gonna try to uh ride this but bill bill's got his options yeah but you know what though also saying that they stick with Dable, what's really going to put the Giants over the hill is, uh, you know, we all know how good Dable is with, with quarterbacks and mm. developing. Look what he did with Josh Allen. So Daniel Jones was not his guy. He's not. He's, he's not, not. He's not Shane's guy. He's not Dable's guy. Well, they're going to bring him back for one more season, but. He's, he's got no choice. He's nobody's guy, by the he's way. No, nobody wants him, but yeah. he, Dable did a decent job with him, and, and they gave him the extension because he won a no, playoff game. Yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones has improved under Dable, but... You know Daniel Jones and... Uh, sorry to cut you off. And uh, what's the name of the quarterback from the Jags? They, uh, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence. They have the exact same numbers. Yeah. And people are higher. They're like, oh, Trevor Lawrence is great. He's amazing. The exact same... From when? Numbers. They use that word. They did a word... Uh, they did a comparison of both what, of last their careers season? at this point. Mm-hmm. Since... Trevor Lawrence has walked into the NFL. Mm -hmm. They compared him to Jones. They have the exact same numbers. Now, when you think of Trevor Lawrence, you think good quarterback taking the team to a next level. You think of Daniel Jones, you don't think that. Yeah. He's on the Jags. Nobody in this planet is going to tell you that Daniel Jones is on any level near what he is. 
Especially when you're in a market like New York. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. There's such a big difference in the franchise that but, they're playing and it for doesn't help and that the success. Like, and it doesn't help that he looks like Eli Manning. I don't, I, know yeah, 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 I don't know if that's yeah, yeah, coincidental. I, I, tell, I tell him that all the time. I don't yeah. know if that's coincidental, but it's not a good option. Sometimes I get no. flashbacks. It's like, oh, it's Eli. Come on. <laughs> the big helmet. The extra big helmet. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a zoo from yeah, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I, it is going to be an interesting offseason for all those teams. Um, yeah, so that was uh, football. Cowboys, right? <laughs> uh, just one last thing. I want to throw one more stat out there. Shout out, out to there. Hugo, by the way. Love you, dog. Since 19, from 1965 to 1995, the Cowboys are 31 and 15 in the playoffs. 31 and 15 with five Super Bowls. Right. Since then, they are 5 and 13. Means they've gotten to the playoffs a lot less and zero Super Bowls. Right. I don't think they've sniffed a NFC championship uh, nope. since then. Since Jimmy Johnson was the head coach. Yep. So, Jerry might have to start <laughs> doing some thinking. Well, let, let's move on to uh, uh, the New York Knicks. So, besides, uh, yeah. what did you think of the trade? Uh, with uh, OG? Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, I didn't know how to feel about it, but I, I, I guess I was okay because it's it stung a little bit that we had to get rid of quickly because I like quickly coming off the bench. But... R.J. Barrett, he had plenty of t chances to prove to me that he was the guy, that he was the third really? overall overall pick. And I'm not saying he was a bad player, but I don't think that he was worthy of the third overall pick. He, Because you know, you don't know what each game, you don't know which Barrett you were getting. You were going to get either a bus Bar uh, Barrett or you would get like the guy that was you know chosen third overall. He was very, very iffy. Like I, I, I don't know which Barrett I was going to get each time I would watch the Knicks. He's such a polarizing player. Like right. I still feel he was the best pick in that draft. RJ over Zion and, and John Morant. John Morant. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> Zion. We don't know what's going to happen with right. him. Well, he's well, still hold busy, on, wait. He's still busy undisciplined, with stars. <laughs> undisciplined, overweight. I get all of that, but he's still a way better player than RJ. When yeah, Zion you, is on the court, he's talent one and of the, skills wise, yes. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm, that's what I'm going by. I'm going by that because well, you also threw in John Moran. I'll take you know, John Moran in those headaches too. If we're just talking like talent, that. it's like that. Me and you've had the John Moran argument a couple yeah, times. Yeah, if we're talking talent, I'm taking Ja right. easy. See the problem? Well, but hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Well, and not all the time. The two Ja's, other players, Ja missed how many games and came back and is still three times yeah, the better he's player to than pull out a gun on social media. A hundred percent. But what I'm saying hurt. is he like, missed so he missed good. all that and he got hurt. Now he's gone for the season. When he comes back, mm -hmm. whenever he comes back, game one, the second the tip off starts, he'll still be a better player than RJ Barrett. You know what the problem is also with those two those two. RJ guys? will never no, catch the cut. That's here that that job. RJ's is. been compared. RJ's first five seasons. Everybody's right? compared to everybody. Equate. That's just the media. There's only four other players in the NBA to equate the equal numbers that RJ has in points, assists, and rebounds. And it is his player efficiency. And it's away. Durant, Jordan, LeBron, those names. And those, yeah. you, do we have any of these questions when those players were playing? We don't, but I feel <laughs> that's, like. That's my point. It was still too early for him, and I think the Randall factor, Randall RJ, being on the team. Did not allow him to take the next step. RJ, there's and tears. I think he's gonna flourish in Toronto. There's tears, especially there's, since there's he's not, not that many options. Microscope. Yeah, there's not that many options. Because the thing they also, Van Vliet, they're gonna get rid of uh, Siakam. Yeah, because you know, you know, also the thing with with RJ Barrett is that in the beginning, since he was chosen so high, he was automatically looked at as the guy that's gonna take us over the top. He was supposed to be as like he the should. face of the Knicks. Yeah. But now should. that he's in Toronto, I think that he's gonna play a lot better because that pressure is gonna be off of him. He's in a small market team. A lot of people don't watch Toronto basketball anyway. And I he's think, also home. Yeah. I think his numbers will be better. It's the Jordan Poole effect. We're gonna put you over there. There's nobody really there. You get more touches. You could kind of do whatever you want. He's got quickly with him too. Yeah. Yeah, but and, we're not talking know, quickly. I get every Nick fan loves quickly. Quickly is going to be a solid, solid well, because player. Because fans love homegrown guys. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Everybody was mad when they got rid of. Uh, we never is. keep our. But quickly is also not as good as RJ. No, no. So that's what I'm saying. Like quickly, yeah, he's. But he's now be, look at us. We, he'll be better and stuff. But RJ is like the real piece that the Raptors yeah. are waiting on. But listen, at the end of the day, I'm always going to be a fan of the team over the players. So if this was a move that was needed to make my team better. 
Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. These players are going to be gone, mm-hmm. along gone, and I'm still going to be rooting for the Knicks, unfortunately. Yeah. But if it makes my team better, and so far it looks like yeah, it has, no, I, I, that's that's all that matters. We said that on the last episode that I think the Knicks won the trade. Oh yeah. My right. my whole thing is I think the Raptors the only benefit on their side was that they got two starters instead of right. one immediately. And the only but, reason and the only reason why Knicks fans didn't like this trade is because. They think that we need to have that star. We need a Kevin Durant. We need a you Donald do. Booker. No, no, no. You do to win a chip. No, no, no. But I'm not saying that. that was but on that trade, I was okay with departing one of the two players, right. not two pieces. No, but what I'm just saying is that there's Nick fans out there that are never satisfied because they want that elite box office star that's going to take us over the top. Because not only do they want to win, but they actually want a guy that's going to be up on all the billboards and a great representation of the team. Uh, kids are going to be buying their jerseys, weedy box, the whole thing. Because they haven't had that in so long, and they do right. need that, I think, in order, had you in order for them to be Mello. real contenders. Mm-hmm. They and need you know, that. shout out to Melo because he was the one player that actually wanted to come to New York and could handle it. And, 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 and they all still about, and they and still wanted to win it. here bad. And, and they botched Jackson. it. Phil uh, Jackson messed up four years of Carmelo by goal. trading oh, all man. of those things just to try to get him. Yeah. You botched it by feening to get him. No, but I think that he I was think, coming no matter what as a free agent. But I think at that, yeah, he was. He couldn't have been more clearer. But we had that one season where we had Woody as a coach and we went into the playoffs. I think we were headed in the right direction. Yeah. And then Phil came in and he completely blew up the team. That's what I'm saying. The, yeah. the Knicks, they step on their own foot repeatedly yeah. throughout right. history. And we make one move to go forward. The next move we make is going to send us three three steps back. <laughs> right. That's literally how Except it goes. Except we there. You no, coming I'm, on I'm, board? No, no, I'm talking oh, as, oh, oh, I'm talking oh, as oh, like oh, Dolan. Oh, Dolan, like any, never in my life will I be a Knicks fan. <laughs> Nets all day, baby. From Jersey days. You're supposed to be a Jersey boy with me. Well, you know what? I was explaining this to him. The reason why I became a Knicks fan is mm. and because of my father. God rest his soul. Okay. My father... We, we One of the things that we first bonded over was sports. And mm-hmm. my father was a diehard Knicks fan, especially during the Patrick Ewing, John Starks days. Oh and me God. sitting with him, watching the games in his, in the bedroom or in the living room, that's when we really enjoyed it. And it was those days were electric. Like, the Garden was electric during that time. It was one of the best teams in the league, you know, always up going against Chicago and Jordan. In and the 90s, we were... Right. Perennial. This whole this whole time while he's talking, I want to put the camera on you so they can see your face, your orgasm face. Like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I cause the, I remember the, between my the voice, Knicks, I remember it the Knicks in the nineties. So oh man, oh, they were my. so good. Between my voice and that face, I, I, I'm <laughs> one of those people that subscribe to the fact that Mike won six rings and Mike was in that era. Right. He blocked the Knicks out of at least one or two chips. He was. Yeah, he left he for two. Years. One or two. two yeah, he, in my, in my he left for two years, and I couldn't beat the Rockets. No, no. But uh, we explained this before. Yep. Ninety two, ninety three. We pushed the Bulls to the limit. Yeah. And we were the better team, if it wasn't for a guy named Charles Smith. But, oh. but <laughs> guys lost. The every Nick has oh. that same reaction. Oh. But I, I feel like that because Pat was in his freaking prime. Yeah. And in those years, yeah, with ninety four, he started to break down a little bit. But I, 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 we were constantly there, constantly in the playoffs, 40, 50 win team all the time. <laughs> uh, great defense. This is thirty years ago. <laughs> See the way he looks off into the distance when Listen, he talks bro. about this. But you know what it is, Listen, man. Bro, it's just- I, I remember. I remember even twenty, even like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, when I, you know, got. Got to hook up with a certain girl, and I haven't forgot about it to this day. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's that's the announcement. <laughs> yeah, but do you, you never do you get the best times of your life? Now that you've Woo! moved on and you've dated a whole bunch of other women, whether it worked out or not, you still tell your friends like, "Yo, you remember that girl I had thirty years ago?" Well, let me ask you, Cabo. <laughs> right? No, I would never do. Hold that. on a second. Oh. You, we went I out one day. Boys, you hooked up with J Lo. Mm-hmm. Fifteen, twenty years pass. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna remember J Lo. Of course I'm going to remember okay. Jimmy. Okay. No, 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 but that wasn't my question. That wasn't my question. My question is 30 years later, am I still going to be talking about, you know, like with my boys, like, oh, man, remember 30 years ago I had J-Lo? I mean, I don't that talk kinda about it. That kind of sounds sad. I, it, it is sad. You know why? Because we went through the Marbury phase. We went through the Steve Francis. You guys went through the Nixon phase. Marbury phase. phase. We went through. All the, self-inflicted wounds. We went through the, uh, the Nate da- David days. Lee, Nate Robinson, <laughs> yeah. Wilson Chandler. 
Then we finally got Out a Houston. superstar. Mind you, Houston. in those years that you're naming, you guys drafted phenomenal players that went on to become phenomenal players uh, elsewhere. for other teams. Elsewhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the issue with the with them trading RJ and and quickly. I think going back to what we were talking about earlier with the Cowboys, the Cowboys, the Knicks, there's a couple teams in on different sports the organizations. Before they got sold. The Mets. I think just the culture is not what it's supposed to be for a winning team. Like, I get that coaching plays in a, a, a role and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think just, I, I, I just don't, the Cowboys are supposed to be America's team. You don't ever hear really anything about the good camaraderie with that team. You don't hear anything about that. You hear about individual stuff. You go to the Knicks. <coughs> the Knicks are doing a lot better, especially after the trade with uh, the duo that they got with Randall and, and Brunson. Brunson, Randall, and OG. OG's, OG's no, 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 a no, it's a duo. It's a duo. It's a duo. It's definitely a duo. It's not yeah, a but trio. I think OG is the piece that a hundred percent plays a lot but better. I, I'm with talking about the too. duo. Yeah. The reason why the Knicks got better is OG takes away so much responsibility from Randall. Yeah, Randall could that now, now just Randall be a could just I'm um, just gonna run up and down the court and score and grab some boards, which is what Randall's been trying to do for a while, while Nick fans were bashing him. But I, I still think Randall's a third piece <laughs> on a on a winning team. I don't think he's the piece or a second piece. I think he's the third piece. I agree, but that's why I said you guys are not a championship team. No, we're not. I think we have a because no, no. I think Brunson is not a one. I I think Brunson. It goes back Brunson to what you said when you said that they that Nick fans feel like they need a star. You guys do if you want a championship. Well, Brunson you can is take a star that team me. right now, but you have to insert a one. Brunson is a star to me, hands down. Not a one. He might be. He's he, a one A. No, he's a one A or a two not. on a great team. I think he's he's he can be the Kyrie to somebody's LeBron when they were in Cleveland. Like yeah, he's that good. That's how yeah, I yeah, see yeah. it. He's that's that good. But just when LeBron is not there, oh, it's just Kyrie. Let him get his thirty. We'll shut everybody else down. So hypothetically, what if there was that trade that went down where right like now, Cat came to the Knicks? Or, he's or, not it. Or um, not Cat. I'm fucking Giannis. No, 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 no. Uh, he plays Giannis the, would be the only star that fucking um, fuck, Embiid. No, no, no. Fuck. What position? Donovan Mitchell. Oh, okay, okay. Donovan Spider. Mitchell. I don't yeah. think Spider's Without the Brunson? Guy. Huh? So you're removing Brunson. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, if what if there was a situation where it was Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, and, and Randall? I would like that. Yeah. I would take that. I would at least surround that with a, with some pretty tough defenders, some 3 and D guys. We got you a might, couple you of might, those. Oh, you might, a good defender. You might push... So no, but hard. I mean, like, you know, the whole team. And like Grimes. Have, you would well, really... They're looking to trade Grimes now. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my, my situation, my dilemma with the Knicks. I feel like we are... We, if you would have told me this scenario 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I would have took it. Oh, the draft picks, we got draft picks. Yeah. We have the solid team. We have actually one of the best teams in the East. We do not have the guy. The problem is the guy is not available. Nope. And the guys that are available, I don't see. They're not, they don't fit your need. And I don't They're see not the them, puzzle piece. Yeah, and then I don't see them transitioning. Because there is guys there. available, but like you said, the guy, the guy is not that would fit in with those two pieces that you have mm-hmm. is not available. Like you need like a Damian Lillard or something like that. You know? Yeah, Dame is actually. I feel Dame was the piece that. Dame was just when when that talk started, I was like, okay, this is a no brainer because the Dame would have made more. The Knicks really want Spider. Yeah, Dame is Spider two point oh. Yeah, and Dame, I feel to me is much more of an upgrade than Spider, and I think that he can play off the ball, he can play on the ball. So when you're gonna arrest Brunson, he made the most sense. But a guy like that is not available, and I don't think. As much as Knicks fans love him and he's from New York, I don't think Spider's a guy. I actually am higher on Cat because Cat has a high three-point percentage. Yeah. And what you're going to need is points and in an abundance of points. Um, but Cat only works if Robinson's on the floor for me. That's my, my issue. Well, let's not also forget... He used to be coached by Thibodeau before in Minnesota, and that didn't work out so well. It, it didn't, but I think that he's the only player I, besides Embiid, which is, again, some pie in the sky, and, and Giannis. 
pie in the sky. Those are the only two guys that you could say if they were available, if they came to New York, that would instantly put New York in a in a different yeah. type of conversation. Yeah. Super pie in the sky for Giannis. Yeah. He's holding them up hostage for the rest of his life. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Him and his I mean, brothers. His, his brother. He's going to go have a kid. He's going to be like, sign my kid now. Sign my kid too. <laughs> like, like <laughs> Thanos should not be... On an NBA court. Yeah, the Thanos, uh, the other one, what's it? I don't know his other, the other the one. The Thanos is by far the worst, though, because there's actually a reel on how horrible this guy is as, as a basketball <laughs> And he used to be a Nick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. They did a jersey swap. Yeah. And his brother, yeah. his brother didn't even play. <laughs> no. And he did a jersey swap with him. I was like, that's so... What is this, like a charity thing? Like, <laughs> fuck. That's got to be yeah. such awkward, like, family dinners with them three, right? <laughs> like, like, either who would you rather sit at at a family dinner, their table or the Ball brothers? Because uh, they got, you know, they got that one brother yeah. who's like, yo, please, like, let me the into Angel. the league. I actually think, well, I think, um, what's the name of the older Ball brother? I like Not, um, Lonzo. 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 La I think Lonzo could ball. And, and Melo's. No pun intended. Melo's the. I see what you did. The Melo is the uh, the best one out of all. No, three. yeah, I think the the three. I think it worked out exactly how it was supposed yeah. to work out. The other one, he's like a sharpshooter, but he's not that sharp of a shooter. And I, I think he's lacking height and, and and a little bit of quickness. That's his that's his issue. I don't know, but it's uh, that's another. I see every year before the season starts that he gets like a ten year deal for. His, a G League team or something like that, and then all of a sudden, ten day contract. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, not ten year. Yes, a ten day contract, and then after three days, they're like, "All right, we let him go." He's actually played with the other two brothers. Uh, he's gotten ten day contracts. He was on the Hornets. For yeah, a little at the bit. beginning of this. Uh, yeah, that's they gave him a ten year. Uh, ten. Lamelo was like, deal. "Yo, I'll resign. I'll sign the extension. Just get my brother." He probably you told know. me, "I'll pay him out of my salary. Just go ahead." <laughs> <laughs> Just He's like, having a kid. I got. I got. No, I got you. Him. I got him. <laughs> but the Ball brothers, uh, Lonzo and and Melo, they could play. They could ball. Yeah, and I Lonzo, think if they play together, that'll take Melo off the ball, and he could play off the ball. And they that, both got. Nice. I don't know what's going on over there in that family. Maybe weak bones or something. But injury is killing them too. Uh, well, Lonzo hasn't played in two years, so I don't know. Lamelo's gone already, right? Lamelo came back. He, he he did. He had a bad injury, but he came back. He's played the last couple games for... Yeah, let's see how long it lasts. I love watching him play. He's great. I like him. I think he's got play, star yeah. quality. I think he got swagger. And I think the kid can shoot. I think he can play. When I see him play, you know what I think of? I think of, like, you know, the the really good rec teams, like in your local rec. Like, they got yeah. the older heads, but they all ball. Yeah. And then you get the one high school kid that could come in and he can ball with them. Yeah. And he's a little bit faster. That's what I. That's what I see when I see him on the court. Like, he's there having fun, doing all this crazy stuff, and everybody else is just looking at him like... He just needs a little movie. bit of discipline, I, I believe. And, and you got to be in a better franchise. No, but I think that Melo... First of all, you could build a franchise about, around Melo. Michael so Jordan think, couldn't. If he's staying in Charlotte, that's cool. <laughs> not, not Michael. Michael can't Mike build a, couldn't build a couldn't franchise build around, around anybody. He couldn't do so, it. Yeah. But I think Melo needs discipline. I think he needs fundamentals. And if he put more priority into his defense, I think it would it would would make him in the up. He I, did he make all star? I think he's been all star yeah, once I th I already. Think, I think so. he's made one. I'll double check that, but I think he's made one. But this, so you take Giannis, who's a superstar, over a fat, and then his two brothers are scrubs, and then the three ball brothers. Two of them can actually ball. So I, the ball brothers. Yeah, he did. 2022. There you go. But um, speaking of the Knicks, there might be a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and I say that because I'm a, I'm a Mets fan. And the joy and elation I felt when the Will Ponds sold the team <laughs> is something that with New York, it'll, with the Knicks, it'll be different. Like, I think, I don't know what I'll do when James Dolan sells this team. He's being sued uh, for sexual assault, alleged sexual assault, and sex trafficking. Now, if if which I don't condone, but if if Dolan does sell the team, it, it, I don't think there's anything in this world in sports because I saw the Giants win two Super Bowls that I would feel I'm crazy about instantly. Like I'll rip off all my clothes and run down the street. <laughs> like if, if Dolan if he sold it. Not even if they won anything. If he just sold the team. If, if he just sold the team. I'll tell you this. You know what? how crazy that would be to me? 
that if Dolan sold the team, I might consider going and cheering for the Knicks. So I want that's how the much I think he is a this. detriment. Put that, put that into that's put, that's how on, much of a man. detriment I think he is to his own company and team. He's such he's a, such a detriment. Yeah, that's it's why crazy. Durant didn't want to play for New York. That's why LeBron, LeBron didn't, didn't want, want to come to New York. But people have came out and said it like, yo, you guys be putting up the stuff in the Daily News and the Post and mm. all this stuff. And I didn't even want to go there. People have yeah. a bad, like they want to go here to score 50 and 60 and try to break people's records in the mm. Garden as an opposing as player. As the opposing player. Nobody wants to come here and they, oh, yeah, we love playing in the Garden as a visitor. As a visitor, not a Nick. Right. So. Forget about I. You know I said that, like on the last couple episodes back. I said I'll give up uh, a couple Yankee championships, which I'm not a Yankee fan, and, and one of the giant Super Bowls. If the Knicks could get a championship, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite that statement. I'll give up a giant Super Bowl and both Mets World Series wins if James Dolan just sells the Knicks. <laughs> That's it. So that's my statement. I'm kind of in lockstep with you there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, we'll both be like Will Ferrell in, in old school. We'll just be running down. We're going streaking. We're going streaking. <laughs> he finally did it. You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> and my last, last, last thing on the Knicks. Did I mention this before? I think Trey Young will be. Yeah, you said that last exceptional episode. Exceptional on on the Knicks. He I would think be. he is the type of player we're looking for. I think he'll play to the fans besides his skills. Um, and I think he'll be perfect for us. Yeah. So personally, I don't give a fuck about him because you know he's looked at as a Nick enemy. But yeah. Ice I, I'd be stupid. Ice I'd be stupid not to make a deal to make him come to the next. Yeah. So I you know, there's rumors he already put out he wants to be paired with with Wemby in San Antonio. So um, Atlanta is looking to move. They don't want to move those pieces, but nah, yeah, they're, once they're, a player starts putting those rumors out, Dejounte will be gone before February. Yep, uh, and then Trey. They're gonna. I think they're gonna hold on to Trey as long as they can. Yeah, but he's. But he's gonna, once he already wants out. Yeah, I know, tell. but I think they're gonna try to do some things, maybe even behind the scenes, where they're trying to be like, "Yo, listen, just wait it out. Maybe one or two years. Maybe we'll try to trade, or you know, is there any p- person you want us to go get? Because Atlanta." should not be having these problems. You are a major city in America with a big market, yeah. a huge support from your fans, a huge fan base, and you guys got DeJounte Murray and got worse. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. that's possible. And uh, them giving up John Collins wasn't a good move neither. And it was random. Yeah. That was so random when I seen that he got traded. I was like, I didn't even know that he was for sale. I don't That's know. That's crazy. I don't know why they did that, but Atlanta needs to figure it out. And just by the fact that Trey's team is already putting that out that he wants to play with Wemby, tells me he wants out. Yep. When you let your when you let your camp or yourself let put that out there in the atmosphere, yeah, it's done. Don't do. So I'm gonna do something very impromptu. Uh, Puerto Rico versus DR, <laughs> right? Jason's obviously Puerto Rican. And I'm, I'm not actually. No, no, I'm not. So who started this rumor? <laughs> I think it's because I look Puerto Rican. So give us your background. I'm Colombian and Costa Rican. I'm the Colombian other. and Costa Rican. Yeah. Okay, so come Colombia, Costa Rica versus DR, the <laughs> voice challenge. Okay. Kaba's gonna give us a sentence or a phrase, you know, like McDonald's. I'm loving it. <laughs> I will do it my way. Jason will do it his way. And when we post this clip, the fans are going to vote whose voice they like better. Remember, it's great that you're watching the video, but close your eyes and use your imagination. And this will be just regular... uh, Regular sayings that people have said. I want to spice it up a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) He's not Puerto Rican, folks. All right, Breaking so news. I'm going to do, I just randomly Googled uh, famous sports quotes. Oh, this okay. is perfect. All right, so how many do you want to do each? Maybe two each? Uh, let's just do three. Okay, yeah. three. Who's first up? Well, well you know, we got to let the guests first. Jason, first. first. The quote is, how about we also add this in? I'm going to say the quote. See if you could tell me who said it. Oh, I, li- I like okay. that too. Okay. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Oh, I got that one. Be the man. You got to beat the man. Who said it? I don't know. Ric Flair. Uh, oh, you. 
Well, not, you didn't let me answer. Oh, oh, you want, but it's not for you. You said it was his oh, turn. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not a wrestling guy, unfortunately. Hugo is. He'd be perfect for this, by the oh. way. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. I got that. I know you would get I that one. I don't got this one. Oh, this is so, this is in my wheelhouse right here. I want to kiss you. I could, could, could I will. I want to kiss you. I could care less about the team winning. Nah, I'm going to give that one to Jason. Sorry. Uh, First uh, round to Jason. Who was it, Jason? Joe Namath. Yep. <laughs> Damn. Oh, that, yeah, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have known that. I'm not a Jets guy. <laughs> I'm not a wrestling guy. You're not but a Jets guy. We're here good. we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. To be the man, you got to, woo, beat the man. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really good. Yeah. And this, 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 this was Joe. I want to kiss you. I could care less about the team struggling. <laughs> That's exactly how it sounded. <laughs> All right, round two. Do you know what my favorite part of the game is? The opportunity to play. Do you, do you know what my favorite part of the game is? The opportunity to play. That's pretty good. You know who said it? No. Mike Singletary. Oh, okay. All right, all right. He's got a lot of them. Yeah. Ready, Rick? Can't win with him. Can't play with him. <laughs> <laughs> got another one for you. Ready? Let's go eat a goddamn snack. <laughs> I'm killing Jason right now. <laughs> Yo. Is this a jet? It has to be a jet. Or a, or a devil. Let's go eat a goddamn snack. I don't know who said it, though. Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan. Oh, I love Rex. He said it on Hard Knocks. Oh. That's what he's famous for. Yeah. He's famous for wanting to go have a goddamn snack in his wife's feet. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, his wife's feet. Yeah, Didn't he have, fetish. like, an awkward photo on his desk? It was his, his wife's, wife's feet. feet? Yeah, yeah a foot he has a foot fetish. Oh, my God. His wife's, like, hanging out the, yes. out the car or some shit. Yeah, weird. Not not judging anybody's... Uh... And, <laughs> no, no. And I, don't know, and I don't know this for a fact, but supposedly Rex Ryan has a tattoo of his wife on his arm, and she's wearing a Sanchez jersey. She, no. He, he does. He does. This is, this is real. Okay. So I, there's two things about his wife that are weird. We gotta, I got to get a picture of it, but <laughs> he actually does have a tattoo. Wait, clarify. Him. How do you know his wife? Because of hard knocks and, and just, yeah. well, I listened to I ESPN saying, radio. He said, get a, a picture of her tattoo. I'm like, wait, you know her? All right, moving on. Final round. You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Baseball is 90% mental. The other half is physical. It ain't over till it's over. I kind of feel it. I know who that is. It's your turn, isn't it? Okay. It, 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 it is my turn. Well, who did no? Did no, you, no, no, no. You just said Rex Ryan. Yeah. Repeat it. I know who said it, but repeat it so I can say it. Baseball is ninety percent mental. The Baseball. other half is physical. Baseball is ninety percent mental. The other half is physical. It ain't over till it's over. Yogi Berra. Yep. 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 All go right. Losers. Here we go. You ready? Let me see if I can find a really good one. Come on, Rick. This is to tie it up. I know. <laughs> You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Oh. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I think this is Michael Jordan. Or is, is it Kobe? No, nah, wrong sport, bro. <laughs> the great Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Oh, Wayne Gretzky said that? Yes, sir. Sounds like a Jordan Kobe type. Unfortunately, of Kobe. you I, have I lost. You have lost. It does sound like a mama mentality uh, yeah. thing, but no, nah, Wayne Gretzky. Well, Jordan also has something about. Uh, um, no, nah, Michael Jordan's is way longer. His is, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've almost missed 300 games. Mm -hmm. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot I missed. Mm -hmm. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeeded. That's the quote that I like. Right. And, I, and I knew he had something kind of similar. Yeah. All right, last one, just for shits and giggles, if okay. any of you guys know it. Statistics are like bikinis. They show a lot of butts and nothing. They show a lot. But nothing. What? <laughs> Go ahead. They show a lot, but not everything. Okay. So repeat it. Statistics are like bikinis. They show a lot, but not everything. Statistics are like bikinis. They show a lot, but not everything. St I can't even <laughs> wait to say the words. St 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 statistics. 
Don't make fun of me. Today, Junior. Statistics are like bikinis. They show a lot, but not everything. You get in there. I'm still going to give it to Jason, though. I'm loving it. That was... uh. That was Lupinella. Lupinella. Oh, that's another. Man, I like this. I like this. Every time me and Kaba do like some weird little game and it, and it just. Yo, I like, yo, I like this too, man. This is. We did the uh, the names, the MLB names. I, I tested Kaba with a couple of, because you know in baseball they have some great names, you know, like Catfish Hunter, uh, <laughs> Rusty <laughs> Cunts. And yeah, stuff I, actually, like that. I actually had one saved. We can. If you guys want, we can end the show on this one. Go ahead. Okay. All right, here we go. Final question of the game. What MLB teams have the most wins since 2000? Now, there's 10 open spots. As you name them, I'll tell you what position they rank. If you can give me the top five, we're good. So MLB teams, most wins since 2000. San Francisco Giants. San Francisco is number six. New York Yankees. Number one. Chicago Cubs. No. Tampa Bay Rays. No. Boston Red Sox. Boston is number four. So right now you got Seattle one, Mariners. four, and six. Mariners are not. Okay. I'm telling you, this is going to shock you. Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers are number two. So we got one, two, four, and six. You said this is going to shock me? Yeah, there's a couple teams in here that you, you, you might not think of. Yeah, you got to really think about early 2000s. Yeah. That's the only clue I can give you. Correct. So you got Yankees, Dodgers, Yankees, Red, Dodgers Sox, Red Sox, Giants. Giants. Minnesota Twins? No. Oh. They were good in the early 2000s. Yeah. They were. <clears throat> Cleveland Indians. They are number nine, the Guardians. Oh, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Politically <laughs> correct. But in the 90s, they were the Indians. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but didn't that bog you that? Cleveland is in that. Yeah. List. Me and Rick didn't guess that one. That was one of the ones that we couldn't yeah. get. Wow. So you got number nine. Milwaukee Brewers. No. No. Chicago White Sox. No. No. <laughs> Oakland Athletics. Oakland is Oakland number eight. Oakland is actually on this list. Number okay. eight. San Diego Padres. No. Texas Rangers. No. You're missing four teams. Texas is pretty good. Atlanta but Braves. But not consistently. Atlanta Braves, number five. Atlanta Braves, okay. So out of the top five, you're only missing number three. Houston Astros. Houston Astros are number 10. You are now missing number three and number seven. New York Mets. Nope. Okay. We're so not on the list. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays. No, sir. No. Which I thought they might be on the list. Yeah. But they're this Baltimore region. Orioles. Nope. I didn't think so. <laughs> uh... Detroit Tigers. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'll, I'll drop a quick hint. Yeah. One of these teams just lost a star. And I'll give you the hint. They're both, uh, one of them is National League, the other is American League. Colorado Rockies. No. No. Arizona Diamondbacks. No. <laughs> no. I think you named everybody but these last two. I feel two like, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like me, going around those two teams. <laughs> you want me to give them up? No. Nah, hell no. I don't want to give this up. Thing. So, so far, you got the Yankees at one, L.A. at two, Boston, Atlanta, Giants. And then you have Oakland, Cleveland, and Houston. There's two teams that are missing. Three and – it's, it's, it's not the Pittsburgh seven. Pirates. Three and seven. No. no. Pirates have been god-awful for it. Philadelphia Phillies. No, they no. were number 11. I, That's I, who I oh, thought. Wow. I honestly – instead of Cleveland, me and Kaba thought it would be yeah. Phillies in that slot. They were number Wait, 11. Kansas they City just Royals? No. No. Oh. <laughs> they had a couple of years there. Yeah, yeah. They won the championship in 15. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. You're not flashback. <laughs> <laughs> and disappeared off the face of the uh, earth. Well, you said Oakland. Yeah, and yeah, they're, the they're Angels? Angels, Angels are number seven. Are number seven. You are only now they missing the number Otani. three team, which is a National League team. National League. Team. Just think high percentage, high wins. I honestly think that there's only one team left that you haven't named it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like hundred percent sure. You said the Royals, Baltimore, said everybody. Pittsburgh. I'm thinking of all the divisions right now in my yeah. head, and I don't think there's anybody left besides them. Did you say Minnesota? Oh, yeah, I did, yeah, I did yeah. say Minnesota, but wow. that's an AL team. 
Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I think I'm gonna have to throw in the towel on this one. All right. This is the third most wins in baseball yeah. in since 2000, and it's the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's exactly how we wow. found. Oh. When I had it, I literally, I, I, not to cheat or anything, I named off right away there like was the two first I, six. I was wrong on. Okay. The first six I ran down. Then I got the Angels in Houston. I couldn't get eight and nine, which is Oakland and Cleveland. Cleveland. I kept, I was arguing, I wanted to type to the guy, like, yo, the Phillies are definitely in there. You got your yeah. math fucked yeah. up. But in the video, he says later on, he goes, Phillies were actually number 11. Oh, man. Yeah. Shout out to St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just goes to show, especially the Angels. The Angels haven't been good for a long time. Oh. Shout out Tory Hunter. And but, you know, but they're, they're a big market team because they're in L.A. Yeah. yeah, but they won a lot. That was they Anaheim. Had Bartolo and... Yeah. And, and Otani. Well, no, they didn't lose. No, they, they didn't win a lot. No, 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 no. That's what I was saying. Tory Hunter. It was Tory Hunter. Tory Hunter. Tory Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember who else was there. They were competitive. That's 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 the weird part. And also they yeah. had because Trout wasn't there when. No, no, no. He wasn't. And they also had a the... Disney movie from those for that for that team. Angels yeah. in the Angels outfield. In the outfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so, the throwback jerseys. Yeah. Shout out to Tim Salmon. <laughs> if you're an old baseball head like me, you'll know who Tim Salmon is. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. I want to thank my guest Jason Enriquez. Go check out first. Place, second class. <laughs> no. First class, second place, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, bro. Uh -huh. Yeah, they marvelous. Okay. Yeah, uh. I'm on my Frank Lucas shit. Three-piece suits, Valentino cufflinks, LV shoes. I bring the shorty closer, just enough to fill the gun on the holster. 